Hello, and welcome to Brogna Arts. Today we are unboxing, swatching, and demoing the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolor palette of 35 colors in the metal tin. I was torn between buying these or the Daniel Smith watercolors because I needed to replace the 40-year-old watercolor paints that I've been borrowing, and I figured it was time to invest in myself and my business. So I wanted to know more about the paints and their light fastness, as I will be using these for commissions. On the back of the box, there is a list of each color, along with their pigment name, pigment number, light fastness, staining qualities, and if they granulate. I think there was some reformulation recently, because when comparing these paints to other reviews of the same palette, um, some of the light fastness and pigment information has changed about each individual paint. All of the colors in this set are 3 out of 3 stars for light fastness, and all but 5 colors are single pigment paints. When the palette arrived, there was some damage done to the cardboard box. It was a little torn on one side. I didn't think much of it at first, but I think it bent one of the metal hinges on the inside of the palette, so one of the cover mixing wells does not have full mobility. The White Knights watercolors are known to be a lot more affordable when compared to other artist grade watercolors, and for the price of this palette, it is about $2 for each full pan of every color, which is about 2.5 milliliters of paint in each full pan. I decided to get the 35 color instead of the 36 because of the metal case over the plastic, and there were a few colors that I wanted in this set that the other did not have. I really do like the structure of the metal tin itself because you do have a lot of space for mixing paints and you can also remove the colors themselves if you do need to clean the tin. I'm just sad about the one side being damaged a little but I might try to bend it back into shape with some pliers or tweezers. There is a mix of different levels of transparency versus opaqueness in the paints. The yellows are pretty opaque which I ran into trouble a little later. <laughs> the paints reactivated fairly easily with water. I didn't need to wait and come back for them to absorb the water. The paints are very creamy and really pigmented, and the binder is listed as gum arabic on the side of the box. I know that they have been previously formulated with honey, but I did not see any mention of honey in the mixture at all. So here we have all of the colors finally swatched. I was impressed by the primary ranges. Of course, you have your cool and warm primaries. I really did like the purples and the greens. Um, I was a little disappointed in the cerulean blue and the cobalt blue. Just they, they seemed a little bit lighter and, and the texture seemed different. So after swatching, I wanted to do a demonstration, and I was drawn to a few colors, especially the Naples yellow, and I tried to do a painting on the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper with the Naples yellow, and it was, it was honestly a disaster. I was struggling with the paper texture. The paper did not absorb the water the way I wanted it to, and the water was mostly sliding and pooling around. Also, the Naples yellow is a more opaque color, so it was not helping me with my color mixes. Whenever I would mix colors with the Naples yellow, it would always turn into sort of a light gray, muddy color, and that was due to the opacity in the Naples yellow. I hope that soon I'll be able to handle the opacity in the Naples yellow. Um, it just was not working with me for my color mixes in the limited triad. So after I decided to scrap that painting, I decided to do a smaller portrait and I was feeling lazy so I didn't cut any of my Arches cold press paper. So I am just painting in the Strathmore 300 series watercolor pad. I am doing a portrait study of Dominique Jackson today. I love her facial features, but I would not say I am the best at replicating her anatomy. So this was for my practice as well as for your entertainment and you can decide how well I did. I did an underpainting for this, which I usually don't do, but I was experimenting with giving her 
skin more depth with the purple and I also wanted to test how the colors would lift. I didn't have any trouble with the purple lifting but towards the end when I was adding glazes of brown to the hair over the Payne's Gray, the Payne's Gray seemed to reactivate but not necessarily lift. It was kind of mixing. It, it could have been because I did not let the Payne's Gray fully dry but it didn't seem to happen when I was glazing over the skin. Once again, even in my new camera setup, my head still sort of got in the way a little bit. I'm sorry for that. I don't enjoy filming myself while I paint just because it messes up with my perspective and I cannot see the painting from directly above. So a lot of the um, structures do get skewed a little. My first impressions of this palette is that the paints are reliable, vibrant, and creamy. They do mix easily with each other, and they layer nicely. This is just my first impressions, but I do hope that I'm able to use them more in the future and give you a more informed review of the paints in general. Here is our finished painting. If you made it this far, I would like to know which color you need to have in your watercolor palettes. Thank you for joining me here today at Brogna Arts. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next week.